Neonatal jaundice is a common physiologic variant, as up to 60% of term healthy newborns exhibit some degree of jaundice in the first week of life. Jaundice is a physical exam finding and refers to the yellow discoloration of the skin and sclera caused by bilirubin deposition. In contrast, hyperbilirubinemia refers to a total serum bilirubin measurement of greater than the 95th percentile for age and requires treatment with phototherapy. This is less common, but still affects about 5% of infants. This video will focus on indirect hyperbilirubinemia, which encompasses the vast majority of hyperbilirubinemia you will see in newborns. Indirect and unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia refer to the same process, and you will see these terms used interchangeably. Direct and conjugated hyperbilirubinemia are also interchangeable, and will be touched on only briefly in this video. Clinically, the progression to hyperbilirubinemia can be thought of as a spectrum. To the left of the spectrum is simple jaundice, isolated yellowing of the skin and sclera without other symptoms. As bilirubin continues to increase, we may see increased sleepiness and feeding difficulty. Rarely, hyperbilirubinemia becomes severe, typically a total bilirubin of greater than 25 mg per deciliter. This puts neonates at risk for bilirubin-induced neurologic dysfunction, or BIND, which occurs when bilirubin crosses the blood-brain barrier and binds to brain tissue, especially the basal ganglia. The term acute bilirubin encephalopathy is used to describe the acute manifestations of BIND, which may initially include lethargy, hypotonia, and poor suck, and can evolve to include irritability with high-pitched cry, hypertonia, fever, and seizures. Kernicterus refers to the chronic and permanent sequelae of BIND, which are most often chorioathetoid cerebral palsy, hearing loss, gaze abnormalities, and dental enamel dysplasia. Fortunately, acute bilirubin encephalopathy and kernicterus are exceedingly rare in developed countries such as the U.S., because we are almost always able to intervene before hyperbilirubinemia becomes severe.